A His Tango by Jorge Luis Borges Audiobook 1x1 A History of the Tango Vicente Rossi, Carlos Vega, and Carlos Muzio Signs Pinines Pina, each a diligent historian, have all investigated the origins of the tango. I must say that I subscribe to all of their conclusions as well as to others. There is also a history of the tango that the cinema periodically divulges, according to this sentimental version, the tango was born in the riverbank tenements of Buenos Aires, the Boca, by virtue of the area's photogenic features, the upper classes rejected it at first but, around 1910, indoctrinated by the good example of Paris, finally threw open their doors to that interesting product of the slums. This from rags to riches Bildungsroman is by now a sort of incontestable or proverbial truth, my memories, and I am over fifty, and my own informal inquiries by no means support such a version. I have spoken to José Saborido, who wrote Felicia and Vlamerica the Brunette with Ernesto Poncio, who also wrote the tango Don Juan, to the brothers of Vicente Greco, author of La Virida the Woodchip and La Tablada the Wooden Board, to Nicolas Paredes, once the political boss of Palermo, and to a few gaucho ballad singers he knew. I let them talk, I carefully avoided formulating questions that might suggest determined answers. The derivations of the tango, the topography, and even the geography they related were singularly diverse. Saborido, a Uruguayan, preferred a Montevidean cradle on the east bank, Poncio, from Retiro, opted for Buenos Aires and for his own neighborhood, those from the south side docks invoked the Calle Chile, those from the northern part of town, the raucous Calle Temple or the Calle Junín. In spite of the divergences I have enumerated, which could be easily multiplied by asking people from La Plata or from around Rosario, my advisors agree on one essential fact, that the tango was born in the brothels. And also on the date of its origins, which none felt was much before 1880 or after 1890. The primitive instrumentation of its earliest orchestras piano, flute, violin, and later the concertina confirms, with its extravagance, the evidence that the tango did not arise from the riverbank slums where, as everyone knows, the six strings of the guitar were sufficient. Other confirmations also abound the lascivious movements, the obvious connotations of certain titles, E.I. Choclo the corn cob, E.I. Fierrazzo the iron rod, and what I observed as a boy in Palermo.